What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So, one of the more frustrating things when trying to work with SketchUp is sometimes when you try to import external models, they don't necessarily come in the way you want them to come in. So they're either too big, or there's a bunch of different material maps that you don't know what to do with. There's a lot of things that can be frustrating, which is too bad because there's a lot of great websites for downloading models into SketchUp. Well, in today's video, we're gonna check out a tool designed to help you import those external models into SketchUp without having any issues. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Transmuter is a tool for SketchUp that's designed to help you import external models. So what it does is it basically automatically sets up your models with the different material maps and it brings in the geometry and other things like that. So what it does is it makes the process really easy and it gives you access to these different kinds of models inside of SketchUp. Note that you can currently get Transmuter for 50% off by going to the sketchupessentials.com slash transmuter. But let's take a look at the way that it works. So what you do is you open up Transmuter and it lives in a separate window like this. Notice how it gives you the ability to either drop a model file in here or it actually gives you the ability to bring in Megascans models for Megascans Bridge as well. We're going to focus on this first option, but if you do use Megascans, this can be a lifesaver for bringing those complex models into SketchUp. But what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a model from Sketchfab. And so we're going to bring in this baby robot slash 3D coat model from Sketchfab. Um, this is by Splider. Um, so you can download this and follow along if you want to. But what you might notice is if you look in the folder at the file, and so if you look in this folder, notice how this gets downloaded as an OBJ type file. And so it has this folder, but then it also has another folder containing all of the different textures and maps like this, right? So if you tried to bring that into SketchUp, it might or might not actually find those. You might or might not get any decent geometry. What we want to do instead is we want to take this OBJ file and we just want to drag it directly into Transmuter like this. And so when you do that, what this is going to do is this is going to give you a number of different options. So first off, notice how the model is laying down. Well, we can adjust this by selecting the up axis to be the Y axis right here. So then you can see this model and you get other information about the model as well. So for example, right now this currently has 71,000 triangles inside of it. So if we were to check the box to show edges, we can see all of those triangles in here. And so Depending on what you're trying to do with your model, you might want to simplify that. And so if you wanted to simplify that, you could use the mesh simplification slider in order to simplify the mesh that's been created in here. Notice how if you simplify it too far, you're gonna start getting errors in here. But um, what you could do is you could use this in order to cut the number of triangles inside of it in half or even more pretty easily just by using the mesh simplification option right here. So. Let's say that we wanted to simplify it to, we'll call it 50%. So we're just gonna type in a value, 50%. And so notice how right now though, you're not getting any materials showing up in here. This is a common problem when trying to import models like this. Well, there's a tab over here designed specifically to help you manage those materials. So you can see how right here, it's actually looking for those materials. Well, you can click on this little drop down, and you can actually go find those materials inside of your model. And so mostly we're going to focus on the main material because that's what material shows up in here. But if we click on the drop down right here, notice how there's options in here for places for us to put the color or diffuse map. So that's just the map that actually contains. So that's just the map that actually contains your materials. In this case, we would actually use the albedo map. So we would just double click on that. Well, notice how that's going to bring that in and notice how this is maintaining the UV mapping that was on it. So if we were to uncheck show edges right here, then now you can see how that metal material is being applied in here. Well, in addition to that, um, because in SketchUp, you could just do that right? But this also gives us the ability to add the bump, opacity, and reflection maps in here as well. So if you were going to render this, you can go ahead and you can load those maps in here like this. So you would load your normal map in here and you would toggle this over to normal. You would also want to load your gloss map inside of the gloss tab. 
and it doesn't look like there is a displacement map, so we would just leave this as is. The other thing we would want to do is for the glass material, we would want to make sure that we set it up as transparent. And so what we would do is we would just set this to have an opacity of something like 0.5 or maybe even lower, maybe like 0.1. So notice how when I set the opacity of the glass, this is now transparent. And so now we could either bring this to SketchUp or we could also set this up as a proxy model. So remember, those are the lightweight proxy models that you can use in something like V-Ray, Thea, or Inkscape. So this would, this would come in as a placeholder model. And so you can use this as a proxy model as well for different rendering programs. But let's say that we just wanted to bring this in as a SketchUp model. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on the button for Transmute. It's gonna ask us to save this somewhere. In this case, I'll just save it in my robot folder just for simplicity's sake. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna transmute that file and then it's gonna give you the ability to open it in SketchUp. So if I was to go to SketchUp, do a file open, open up this test robot baby, what it's gonna do is it's gonna open up that SketchUp file directly in SketchUp. And notice how it saves it as an older file. That just means that you can open it in basically any version of SketchUp. But if I was to take a look at this robot file, notice how this robot gets brought in with a high level of detail into SketchUp. And just say that you wanted to import this as a proxy instead. Well, all you would have to do, you can really select any of these placeholder types um, depending on what you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on face skipping, but if I click on transmute now, what that's going to do is that'll transmute that into a proxy file. All right, so I've got my full geometry over here. That proxy geometry gets created as a proxy file inside of, uh, inside of the folder that you save it in. You can bring that in to your SketchUp model just by dragging it over. And then if I was to run this in Inkscape, so just to take a look at this, because I created this as an Inkscape proxy, but you can see how both of these got brought in as the robot model inside of Inkscape. So notice how the normals are working great. So you're getting that kind of like bumpiness, but the one on the right is only a proxy model inside of SketchUp. And so what that means is that means that you're getting the same result over here as you are over here, but without having the full geometry of the object in here. You might do like a bounding box or something instead of the face skipping in here. So that would just give you a box where the robot would be. But I mean, even if I do a control A and look at this, I'm getting the full model in there with less than 2000 edges. So this is a fantastic tool for importing things that you want to not only use as SketchUp models, but also for your renderings. So remember this tool is currently 50% off as a part of their Black Friday sale. So if that's something you're interested in, you can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash transmuter. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this tool. It's love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.